Hi everyone, we're going to talk about walrus weight problem in this video and in case you don't know, this is actually the second video for this problem. This is a problem that is based on the subset sum problem and that's what I discussed in the first video, how to solve the subset sum problem with dynamic programming. And we're going to continue on from that video, so if you haven't seen the first video yet, maybe it's a good idea to start with that. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, let's look at the problem. In this problem, you are Wallace, the walrus weightlifter, and Wallace is training for a contest where he has to lift a thousand kilogram. So he wants to practice weightlifting, and ideally he would like to practice lifting a thousand kilograms. But the problem is, he's not sure if he can get enough weight plates to get exactly a thousand kilogram. So the idea is, he has many weight plates of different weights, which he is going to combine. Maybe he can get a thousand in total, maybe not, it depends on the weights of the plates. If he can't get exactly 1000, then he'll practice with whatever is closest to 1000. If you look at the first sample input, there are 4 plates, 900, 500, 498, and 4. Now we can't make 1000 with this, but we can make 998 and 1002. Both are only 2 kilograms off from 1000. If we have 2 options which are equally close to 1000, then we pick the greater one. So we're going to pick 1002 in this case. This is stated in the question. So right away, hopefully you can see that this is just a subset sum problem. But there's a twist. We don't know the sum that we need to make. I mean, ideally we want 1000. But this may not always be possible. So we can't just say, here are the weights, see if you can make 1000. Because if we can't, then we have to work out the value closest to 1000. And that, that's what makes it different. Because in the previous video, we always know the target sum. Right now, we don't know that. We have to work it out. We have to work out what is the closest number to 1000. So we can't use the technique that I talked about in the previous video. Well, I guess you can if you try a different sum, as in, let's see if we can make 1001. If, if not, make 99. Sorry, make 999 then try 1002, try 998, and so on. But that feels super slow. So why do we bother discussing the top-down approach from the previous video? Well, I think you should understand how the top-down approach for subset sum works, because that will make it easier to understand how the bottom-up approach works, which is what we're going to use to solve this problem. So let me explain how to do subset sum using bottom-up dynamic programming, and also why it can be better than the top-down approach. Let's go back to this tree that we discussed in the previous video. Remember that there are two subproblems which overlap, this one and this one. Because in both cases we have to make the sum 19, and in both cases we have 6, 7 and 8 to consider. I also mentioned that the subproblem when t is equal to 19 is different to the subproblem when t is equal to 14 or 17. Because even though we're going to try 6, 7 and 8 next, the sum we have to make is different. So this is what I want you to imagine. If there are only three array elements left to choose from, but there are hundreds of values of t, you gotta imagine that there's a lot more nodes on this level, so t equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on, then for each value of t, we have a unique subproblem, and we have to check out this tree to see if we can make that value. But in fact, if you only have three values left, 6, 7, and 8, how many different sums can you make? You can make 6, you can make 7, you can make 8, you can make 6 plus 7, 6 plus 8, 7 plus 8, and 6 plus 7 plus 8. So there are 7 values that you can make, and only 7 values. So wouldn't it be better if we just generate all possible combinations of 6, 7, and 8? Because for each value of t, you can just check if it is one of these 7. That seems much better than trying to work out if you can get t out of this tree, especially when you have hundreds of values of t. Well, this is the bottom-up dynamic programming approach. We generate all the possible combinations, and then whenever we get a value of t, we just check if it is one of these combinations. To generate these combinations, we start from the bottom, or I guess the last element of the array. With just one value, 8, we can generate, well, just 8. But if we add 7 to the mix, we can now generate 7. We can also generate 15, that's 8 plus 7. And of course, we can still generate 8. So basically, every time we add a new number, we just add that new number to every value that we can already generate. So we add 6 as well to the mix. 
we know we can make 7, 8, 15 from the previous row. Now we're just going to add 6 to all of them. Same thing with 5. We're going to start with whatever you can make. And then we're just going to add 5 to all of them. So once we added all the numbers in the array, we're going to have a record of all the values that we can generate. And if we ask, can you make t equal to 15, t equal to 20 or whatever, we just do a table lookup. I mean, at the very top, if the problem is, can you make a thousand, then we're going to have an array which is much bigger, like from zero to a thousand, or maybe even more. And at the end, we're just going to check, is, um, is it possible to do 1000? This is going to be like an array of true and false. So you can't have an array of ticks. You're going to have an array of true or false. So we're going to check array um, location 1000. If it's true, then yes, we can make it. If it's false, then we can't make it. That's what we have to do in the end. The cool thing about this is that you don't need a double array to store this information. If we only care about whether or not we can make the sum. All you need is just an array of booleans that you keep on updating because really the only row that we need is the last one, right? Whereas with a top-down approach, we needed a two-dimensional array, at least in the way that we did it. Now, does this mean that bottom-up is always better than top-down? Well, no, that's harder to say because it really depends on the problem and also the input that you're getting and that's not something I want to discuss here. Earlier, I did say that it's better to generate the combination of 6, 7 and 8 but this is true only because we don't have that many values left in the array. If we're up here somewhere, then there won't be that many values of t, but on the other hand, we'll be looking at a lot of combinations of the elements of the array. So it may not be obvious that bottom-up is better than top-down, and I don't want to talk about that. By the way, this going up and going down, it actually doesn't matter because all we do is pick the elements of the array one by one and it doesn't matter if you start picking from the start or from the end. So it's not like if we're doing bottom-up dynamic programming then we have to pick elements from the end of the array because you can construct this table started from 2, 3, 5 and so on. So anyway, I hope you can see how this approach allows you to do the walrus weight problem because with the bottom-up approach we're storing all the possible sums that we can make in this table. Okay, let's start writing the code. I have written some code here that will return input and I'm going to sort the weights and the array nums. And once I have that, let's pick the weights one by one and work out all the sums that we can make. So I'm going to make a Boolean array of size. Actually, that's a good question. How big should we make it? I'm just going to call W. Um, I guess the plate is going to weigh between 1 and 1000. So if there's one plate, the maximum distance is going to be 999. So I'm just going to sort every possible sum from 1 to 2000. So this is probably too big, but it doesn't matter that much. You can optimize this yourself later. So now we're going to pick the element one by one. So I guess we'll write a for loop. I actually just copy this. So for i is 0 up to n, um, I'm going to call it x. So x is going to be nums i. And if we only have one element, then the only sum we can make is just, well, that element. So wx is equal to true. By the way, when we create the array booleans, the default value is going to be false. So right now at the start, W is all false. Now, if we pick X, so we know we can make X. When we pick the second element, well, this is going to be different because whatever sum we can already make, we can add X to it. So let's write that. We're going to go through the array W for in J equals zero, J less than W dot length, J plus uh, plus. If wj is true and I'm gonna add x to it but I don't want to go out of bounds so I'm gonna check if j plus x is less than w dot length if that's the case then wj plus x is also true I hope that makes sense so if we can make the sum j, 
whatever j is, then we can also make j plus x, assuming j plus x is less than 2000. This is actually wrong. And take a few seconds to work out why this is wrong. Uh, sorry, let me move the mouse. Can you see why this is wrong? Well, let's use an example. Let's say the first value is 2 and the next value is 5. Okay, so um, when we get the first value, when we get, when we get 2, we're going to set w2 to be true. Then when we get 5, of course we're going to set w7 to be true because that's 2 plus 5 but we set 7 to be true when uh, j is equal to 2 right so we look at uh, we go through w we get to 2 and 2 is true so we add 5 to it so now w7 is true but then because this is going up we're going to look at w7 next and then well we saw that w7 is now true we can add 5 to it so now w12 becomes true and then w17 becomes true w22 becomes true and this is wrong because you only had 2 and 5. So hopefully you see why this is wrong. You can't go from left to right. You actually have to go from right to left. So the idea is we, if we do 2 plus 5, we get 7. We can't evaluate 7 again. We can't add 5 to 7 again. That would be wrong. So what we should do is we start from the end. So the first value you're going to see is 2. We do 2 plus 5. We set 7 to be true. And then we don't look forward again. We, we, we keep on looking backwards. So I'm going to have w.length minus 1. Here, we start from the end. We keep on going until we hit 0. Just j minus minus. Um, and if wj is true, and this is the same, and uh, j plus x is less than w dot length, and we say wj plus x equal to true. So this should generate every possible sum. Uh, we can test this, I guess. I'm just going to go through the array w. Less than w dot length plus plus. And if wi is true, Let's print out i. So, oof. what was the input? Let's try that one. So, these are all the values that we can make. Um, that looks right to me. Yeah, that looks right to me. Um, I'll let you check that yourself. But right now, W contains all the values that we can make, all the sums that we can make. So now we just have to work out which one is closest to 1000. I guess the easiest way to do this is just going through well we're gonna have two loops one going forward one going back I'm going to start at 1000 so let's have i equal to 1000 how less than w dot length i plus plus and if wi is equal to true hmm I guess I'm gonna say next largest to be 2001 and you're going, you're going to start from 1000, you go to the right. If you see something true, whatever that is, you set that to be the next largest. And then you break, that's it. So you start from 1000 and you go, if, if you can't make 1000, you find the closest, well, you find the next sum larger than 1000 you can make. Of course, maybe it's never be true, and if it's never true, then you'll get 2001, which I hope is too big anyway. 
and we do the same thing on the other direction so we here we have I guess next smallest call it minus one and same thing except that this time we're going backwards so we we'll go to well up to zero I minus minus and same thing here except that this time it's going to be next smallest and now we have two candidates we have the next largest and the next smallest we just have to work out which one is closest to 1000 right so if next largest minus 1000 is so I know next slide is going to be bigger than 1000 I take away 1000 so if that is less than a thousand minus next smallest and we're going to output that otherwise we're going to output next smallest and I think that should be it let's run this thousand and two so I'm going to try to submit this and if there's something wrong well whatever the result I'll I'll stop the video now I'm going to try to submit then I'll just let you know what happened okay the code got accepted it was actually good that I paused the video because it took a while for the code to pass all the test cases I don't understand why because the running time is pretty fast maybe my internet just slow but then again that's a lot of test cases that we have to go through so that's walrus weight, which is just subset sum. And I hope you know how to do the bottom-up dynamic programming for subset sum now. This is actually a very common problem that you may see in your studies or in job interviews. It's really very simple when you see the final code, right? I mean, just generate all possible sums and then find which one is closest to 1000. But this is the essence. This is the bottom-up dynamic programming part and it's just a double for loop so i hope you can practice writing this question from scratch because that would be a very good exercise but that's all from me i guess uh, and yeah thank you for watching i hope you learned something there